I've been dreaming on in my head like I've seen it A life worth living is a life with meaning I'll do what I love till my heart stops beating I'm feeding this demon Got a taste, can't erase bitterness in my face Work a job every day till your dreams fade away Like a card, never change, play the game that we say I need a break Good afternoon everyone, I'm glad you're here with me Looks like this might be a uh, grand geyser that's currently going off a live view from the web camera. It's currently uh, 4.04 p.m. Central Daylight Time. And here's an update what's going on at Yellowstone. Notice the line of trees that have died off, which has greatly increased. I received um, some more images, this time from Michael Hay, who was there in 2020. And he looked at my video about uh, the images that I received from Josh, who was there on the 12th of last Sunday. I think it was Sunday. Um, yeah, and he said that the changes in just two years was very noticeable, even to him. So I'll show you some of the things that he sent and give you an update what's going on with the flooding. Basically, it's all north of Yellowstone Park. The northeast entrance is closed, and the road coming from Mammoth Hot Springs and Gardner is closed because of road damage. Here's an image of one of the pools by the uh, boardwalk uh, looking out over at um, Firehole River. Look how clear the waters are. He was there at the end of July 2020 um, up until the first week of August. Notice there's very little sulfur. The grass is still alive. This here is an image from Josh. Yeah, look how murky it looks and you can see the steam coming up. Um, not too bad in the back here for the uh, plants, um, but down here in the front, yeah, they're really struggling. Another image of, um, I believe this is Morning Glory. And the hot pool and you can see how many trees are still alive still standing how clear the water is I didn't get an image of morning glory from um, Josh but yeah you can see here yeah it's not looking good another image from Michael Hay this here is the image um, of the bridge that goes across from Josh. This was last Sunday, the 12th. I want to show you this area here, all the sulfur, the gas is coming up. And this was taken pretty close to the same area by Michael Hayes. See, I was concentrating on this rock formation. Yeah, 2020 on the left, and this is what it looks like now. Uh, let's see if I can bring it over a little bit. Now remember how I showed you how these trees had turned black. This is 2020 and some were starting to turn black, but otherwise they were dark gray. I want to show you this image too again of that formation. Yeah, this was uh, last Sunday. Here's another image from um, Josh. Now this was Sunday and see how black they are now? The dead grass. This was from 2020 and this was Sunday from 2020 you can see how clear the pools are the trees are not black and let me bring it over you can see right down in the pool very clear water see they're not black another pool yeah look how clear that is you can see the bubbles coming up one of the uh, mud pots now, I don't know if it's the same one or the same area that Josh sent to me this here is the image from Josh of the microbial 
uh, mats that are dying off. Here's an image from 2020. Yeah, they look pretty healthy. You know, we got crystal clear waters. And you can barely see the trees up over here, but there's not that many that are dead. They're white. Another image from Josh of the microbial mats that have died off. The waters are not clear. They're murky. Lots of steam coming up. Another image from last Sunday. Old Faithful from Sunday. Another image of Old Faithful. See how all the grass is dead. Old Faithful in 2020. Another image of Old Faithful in 2020. Here we are comparing the landscape of uh, last Sunday and this also was just before an eruption uh, last Sunday it's almost like two different completely environments now this is from 2020 this here is 2020 another image from 2020 and I noticed there was some rocks here so let me go through some of the pictures that Michael Hay sent um, probably the first week, the end of July, first week of August. Evidently, there was lots of wildlife still there. The uh, environment was real healthy. Here we have a moose. Another image of the moose. And you notice the trees are not black. Yeah, everything looked healthy. Lush green. Crystal clear pools. I mean, you can even see some wood that's down in there. The uh, microbial mats, the fungus. They're vibrant in color. So clear you can see the uh, clouds reflecting in the pools. So here we have an image of Michael Hay and his friend. I don't know which one is which. I want to tell him thank you very much for sending these images. I really appreciate it. Another image of one of the rivers. A bison walking down the road. Another one crossing the road. You know, you see images like this and you just want to go there, but it doesn't look like that anymore. See, these trees are not black. Yeah, see the microbial mats. Uh, the color is gone. This is from last Sunday. And this is last Sunday. I mean, look at this. This is what it looks like now. This is what it looked like two years ago. Some great pictures he sent. Even the uh, seedlings are healthy. Trees on the ground are gray, just like newly fallen trees. Grass is green. The animal life healthy. Yeah, it was beautiful two years ago. Let's zoom in over here. This is from two years ago. Two years ago. I have to wonder if this is ear spring. I don't know. See, and this is what these pools look like now. This very well could be the same pool now as what it looked like in 2020. So I put the images side by side. It does, yeah, see we got the same right there. Let me move this one around a little bit. Yeah, I think it's the same pool. I could be wrong. And I'll make that larger. The one on the right is 2020. The one on the left is last Sunday. Yeah, what a difference two years makes. Another image from two years ago. And another one. An image of a chipmunk. This elk here was wandering through camp. Yeah, look at the rack on that. Yeah, 
and another image. A crow, I believe. Yellowstone Lake from 2020. A buffalo giving himself a dust bath. 2020. Look at all the buffalo here. I mean, there's all kinds of them here. You're lucky to see one by themselves out there nowadays. Yeah, 2020. Another one from 2020. I can't think of what the name of this bridge is right now. From 2020. Also from 2020. USGS is uh, declaring 68 earthquakes within the last week. Most of them have been up there by uh, the Madison River area. Um, 61 right here. And they're saying the largest is a uh, 2.4. That was on the 12th. And we'll see what else we got here. Um, we got one for today. That's all they're reporting. A 0 0.4 at 17.01. And one from yesterday, a 0 0.9. Here we have the monitor for Holmes Hill. We got several right here marked in red. Uh, this one at 19.22. That comes in as a magnitude 1.50. I don't know where this one's at. There's a small one down here, but it's not marked in red. That one comes in as a magnitude 1.51. Um, 608. That comes in as a 1.60. And we'll go to the spectrogram. We have another one marked in red at 1729. That comes in as a magnitude 1.76. There's its signature. Then we got another one here. Oh, it went small on me. That comes in as a magnitude 1.38. So I downloaded four different monitors this time. This one on the left is uh, Soda Butte. Uh, this here next to it is Holmes Hill. This is the bore hole for the Madison River area. And this one on the right is Purple Mountain. And I noticed this one when I was going through the stuff. Um, yeah, it was a very small popping of the rock. A very small earthquake. Um, a 0 0.38. But look at the heat that came up with that. I downloaded Soda Butte because that's the area where they got flooding right now. We got another little tiny one right there. I'll show you the flooding here in a second. And there's a signature, more popping of the rock. That comes in as a magnitude 0 0.31. And we got more here, but these here, it's probably going to go little on me. Um, they have long P waves on them. And we've got volcanic tremors. And harmonic tremors. Alright, let me go here. And we'll come down here. This is just for the last 24 hours. I'll make that bigger. See, harmonic tremors. And this is what it was showing when I pulled the files. Yeah, we got drum beats going on here. Yeah, this is the uh, swarm. Um, the stream view. Jemisys stream view. And looks like there's another earthquake coming in. The top one here, that's the borehole from the Madison River. And then Holmes Hill. And then Pitchstone Plateau. Here we got Pitchstone Plateau. We got one right there at 1304. And that comes in as a magnitude 1.83. And then we got some more up here. Uh, 2318, uh, 2319, 
and 2322. Take a look at its signature. It'll probably go smaller. All right, let's try and make that bigger. There we go. All right, up over here, I got some images about the flooding, which is along um, Interstate 212. We got um, Lamar River. We got Soda Butte. Um, they're saying that the animals are close by, bears and wolves, and they're warning people about this area. This here is um, Tower Falls. The road in that area evidently has been damaged. So two structures went into the river. This here is an image of one of the houses there in Red Lodge, Montana. Um, these people in these towns, 75% uh, of their income comes from tourism. And because the gateway into Yellowstone is now closed, Many of these businesses are going to close up. A lot of people um, are going to lose their jobs. It's just going to be devastating. Yeah, the flooding went right through the town there along the river. Let's bring this out. Um, there's several bridges by Silvergate that are out. And then the last remaining bridge that was open, they have now condemned. Okay, this is Pebble Creek. Uh, campground road um, there was two places um, that had a lot of disaster so we're gonna go over there to that location let's see here right down here this is the area of flooding along interstate 212 now this image on Google Earth is from 2015 and you can see that they've had problems here before. I have another image of the campground that's flooded of Pebble Creek. This is why, um, yeah, it's going to be a lengthy time um, that the northeast entrance is going to be open or even the uh, Gardner Mammoth um, vault area is going to be open. There's a close-up of what the campground looks like right now, or at least when they did their flyover. And the National Park did a, a flyover. Now this is outside the park. You'll take note of the bridge here on the bottom right. That's it right there. There's the bridge. I wonder if I can tip it. Let me try and tip this so you can see it better. But that's what it looks like right now. And this is along the road there going into or coming out of Pebble Creek. Here we have a image of the Northeast Entrance Road washed out near Soda Butte uh, Picnic Area. Yeah, it's going to be a long time before the Northeast Entrance is ever open again. Here we got um, a paper from Great Falls, Great Falls Tribune. And this is Red Lodge, Montana. The people trying to clean up after the mess like I said 75% of their income come from tourists here's a person being rescued um, by the Na Montana National Guard they had to rescue some people um, fly them out up there yeah it's devastating 75% um, of their income come from tourists and there's no tourists right now um, they all left they're gone yeah, a lot of good images here. So a lot of these people will lose their jobs, probably lose their homes, lose their businesses. It's heartbreaking what's going on there. Just heartbreaking. So this image here is actually just west of Brown Prairie, very close to Trout Lake Trailhead, which is Soda Butte Creek. And this is the area, and you can see they've had problems here in the past. This is on Twitter. I'll give you a link to this. It says 20 minutes of pressure cooking. This is on Twitter. I'll give you a link. It says 20 minutes in the pressure cooker. Might have been a little bit overkill. At least now I have clean drinking water. Is the park road's going to be closed for potentially years? 
I'll be moving over to the dis different side of the park. Yeah, there's areas that um, do not have water because it was contaminated um, by the sewage systems, broken sewer lines, uh, the flooding of the treatment plant, etc. So they have, like I said, they have major problems with this um, Highway 112 and also coming in from Mammoth. Uh, the only problem I could find anywhere doing all these hours of searching was up up in the northern part of Yellowstone. And that was it. That was it. So they still have three entrances um, down south where they can open up the park. So the question is, why are they keeping it closed? Um, I'm sure the infrastructure has already been um, inspected. So are they keeping it closed because increased gases because of the earthquakes? I could see, you know, up there by uh, Roosevelt and the tower, them evacuating. Um, maybe it was just a drill to see how fast they could actually get people out of the park. They're saying the roads coming in from the south, they may open them on Monday. Uh, time will tell. I think it will depend on... I know they're getting live gas readings. They're taking the live gas readings. They do not make them public for anybody. Um, so if they don't open it Monday, I'm going to really wonder and probably side with the increase in volcanic gases coming up out of the ground. Um, I will side with that, that they're worried about an eruption there at Yellowstone. If they don't, if they do open it Monday, well, maybe it was just a drill to see how fast they could get people out. But this road up here, right there, that is the only area where they had any problems whatsoever. The only problems. Now, there was an area um, with one of the campgrounds up over here maybe by Congress pool, uh, where the water overflowed into the campground and there was possibly sewage problems, but that was the only area that I could find within the park whatsoever. There was any problems whatsoever. Uh, Swan Lake, maybe. No, I thought I marked it, but evidently I I don't see where I marked the where the flooding was possibly at. So what are your thoughts after seeing all the recent images from just last Sunday? It was the twelfth, I believe it was Sunday. Um yeah, Sunday. And compared to two thousand and twenty, um what are your thoughts? I guess we'll just have to wait until Monday to see if they do reopen. But yeah, I'd really like to know what your thoughts are about closing the park and keeping it closed. Please put that down below. And I want to thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for your support. Boy, you guys are wonderful. Uh, please stay safe. And I'll talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.